for this video, we're going to go ahead and replace the shift coupler, the shift rod bushing and clip, and the shifter itself. These have become a pretty sloppy through the years here, uh, especially worn out. I can hear it rattling around when this thing's driving, and the shifter itself is very, very sloppy. We get to the shift coupler underneath the rear seat, so that has to be removed, at which point you can pull out the screw for the shifter access plate, and then go ahead and remove the shift coupler. We do that today with an 8 millimeter wrench for our grub screw, which holds the shift coupler to the shift rod. And there's a bushing and rod that go through the shift rod itself, as well as, of course, I'm sorry, the grub screw that goes to the shift coupler. That's just an 8 millimeter. We pull that out. Save that for later, unless, of course, you've already gotten a new one. And then with a pair of pliers, go ahead and hold the through rod and the same 8mm wrench to loosen up the bolt that holds it through the rod and coupler. Right. And as we can see, these bushings are completely worn through to the point where it's not even attached to itself. At that point, we can drop the shift rod itself down and pull off the cage for the shift coupler. Take out the stock shifter. Two 13 millimeter bolts here. I've already gotten them loosened slightly. So just use my fingers. And as always, save your hardware until you have new replacement hardware. And just like that, stock shifter comes out, which uh, in this case is actually missing the reverse lockout plate. We'll get into that when we put the new shifter in place. To get access to two access plates that are used when pulling out the shift rod. We're going to have to open up the hood and remove the spare tire. Once the spare tire is out, there's a small Phillips head screw that you can remove to pull off the access plate on the back side of the apron. And on later model cars, there's going to be an 8 millimeter nut holding a round cover plate that is going to allow you to pull the, uh, the shift rod through the front apron of the car. Once those two plates are out, we can get underneath the car and in between the two torsion tubes, pull off the two 10 millimeter bolts and the oval cover plate there, at which point the shift rod can be pulled out. All right, and then you reach up underneath through the access plate that we just took out. Go ahead and pull out the shift rod and feed it through the front of the car. That's why these that's why these holes are here, and we can see the remnants of the original shift rod bushing and the clip, which is still there and in relatively good shape. Note that we already have the clip on the bushing before we install it into the hanger. It's a heck of a lot easier to do it beforehand than afterhand. And one of the least favorite parts of this job is actually sticking this bushing into the hanger down below here. I've dropped more of these things in my lifetime than I care to count. i this a time or two, and I got lucky. It popped in first time. All right, now that the shift rod bushing clip is in place, along with the shift rod bushing, we're going to go ahead and feed the shift rod back into the tunnel through the access plates. Back underneath the car and give the thing a good shove. All right, now that we got the fun part of the actual shift rod aligned with the clip, we come back up to the front of the car, and you need to push that rod back all the way in place. All right, the last fun bit after we've got the shift rod put in place from the front, push back slightly, and we'll just grab it, and as we see here, pair of pliers or otherwise, and pull it back until you see shift rod cup lined up with the shift hole. Installing the shift coupler, put the cage in first, and screw in the grub screw, 8 millimeter wrench to tighten it in place. There is a hole for safety wire. The reason why we do safety wire here is because at the transmission there's a lot of vibration. These screws are very prone to coming loose, at which point your shifter is no longer attached to your transmission. With the sleeve installed, in one half of the bushings, we're going to attempt using a magnet to get this guy in place. And push the sleeve all the way through. 
and into the bushing on the other side, at which point we can start to screw our screw in. And snug. With the shift rod pushed back in place, we can install the two 10 millimeter bolts holding the access plate to the tunnel. We can install the Phillips screw holding the inner plate in place and the eight millimeter nut holding the outside cover plate in place as well. Right. With the shifter reverse lockout plate in place, we know it's correctly inside because the long side is on the right hand side pointing forward. We'll go ahead, set the spring in place, put the shift rod in place, pushing down to make certain it's fully seated in the cup. And we'll line up the two 13 millimeter bolts. And with those loosely in place, I just want to find a happy medium between left and right movement on the plate and fore and aft. And then tighten the bolts down completely. We'll install the boot, stretch it over and put it in place. Now that everything is reassembled, we can see that our shifter is much more positive feeling. There's very little play side to side and everything is relatively firm and precise like you'd expect it should be.